Sex is the life force energy that runs through us all. Can you use sexual energy for your spiritual evolution or perhaps for emotional healing? Is it even possible? Clinical sexologist Dr. Martha Tara Lee will explore all these and more on Eros Evolution on Om Times Radio. Hello everyone, this is Martha and welcome to Arrows Evolution where sexuality and spirituality meets. My name is Martha as I mentioned and uh, my full name is actually Dr. Martha Tara Lee and my company is called Arrows Coaching in Singapore. I'm based in Singapore and I'm available via Skype so you can check out my website at arrowscoaching.com. Today I have a guest. Her name is Felicia Hunt and she has a MA and she's currently a marriage and family ther- therapist intern. She specializes in sex coaching, cultural, spiritual and differently abled sexuality and works with couples, individuals, family as well as parenting groups. She majored in African American Family Studies and is currently helping people to heal holistically through a client-centered focus and you can contact Felicia at fehunt1 at gmail.com. So today, sexuality and spirituality with Felicia Hunt, we are born spiritual beings and we learn that we are having physical experiences. We also were born sexual beings and we are that from the cradle to the grave. But the age we are born into hides our true purpose from us because of historical, social, religious and political purposes. So our authentic self was lost. We are all on our journey of completion. It takes connecting to our sexual and spiritual selves. Mm, I love what Felicia has written. So welcome Felicia. Well, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Martha. Thank you for having me. So can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and your expertise? Yes, um, I am a postgraduate student from Pacific Coast College in Pasadena, California. Uh, As you stated, I have a master's degree in marriage and family therapy, and I specialize in African-American family services. Uh, I am currently a student with Sex Coach U with Patty Britton and Dr. Robert Dunlap in their professional sex coaching course. And I also study with the Bueller Institute for the ASAC certification course in sex therapy. So I can I consider myself a community healer according to Afrocentric holistic ways. I am into healing one person at a time, and I'm working with diverse groups of people, children, adults, individuals, groups, and families, and couples. I am, you know, making a new venture. I will be providing services with the Village of Hope Foundation in Los Angeles, and I'm currently offering classes and sex counseling services at uh, Madame Lavelle's Romance and Fashion Boutique which is located in 8976 Foothill Boulevard, Suite B1 in Rancho Cucamonga, California. So as you stated, people can connect with me and make appointments at FeliciaH1 at gmail.com. Great. So, and uh, do you have the website or uh, for this uh, boutique that you are working through? Uh, no, they can Google uh, Madame Lavelle's Romance and Fashion Boutique. Okay, cool. Great. Yes. And so you asked me about my uh, expertise. I think I, I deal with the whole person, the mind, body, and soul. I deal with trauma, uh, with uh, post-traumatic slave syndrome and cognitive uh, dissonance and post-traumatic stress disorder as it affects the well-being of person of a person's life and how they how I can provide them the tools to uh, and resources necessary to regain their full, you know, consciousness of their authentic self. Mm. Fantastic. What what made you actually get onto this path of wanting to work with people specifically in their sexuality? Um 
Well, like the title, you know, we are sexual and spiritual beings or spiritual and sexual beings from the cradle to the grave. I just believe that once a person um, knows that, you know, or knows their true self or come into tune with that, then uh, they can live a better and fulfilling life. And that's my hope and my journey is to help other people to become aware of who they are and how they actually exist. Mm. Fantastic. And, um, you know, this show is all about the link between sexuality and spirituality. So what, what do you have to say about this topic or anything else that you would like to add? Yeah, um, I would like to add that uh, the examples or things that I will be talking about as far as like I spoke about the post-traumatic uh, slave syndrome and the cognitive dissonant component, I will be using examples throughout you know, our discussion to, de to demonstrate how spirituality and sexuality are necessary and are linked and to help people begin to build strength and find their resilience. Uh, I would like to say, you know, at this point, all the examples can be, you know, translated across the board with any po uh, population and situation. However, since my specialization is in Africana studies, most of my research and examples will be focused on the black experience. Great. Uh, I'm looking forward to hearing more about this because I know very little being Asian. <laughs> Okay, well, wonderful. I'm glad to, uh, you know, be delivering this message. Mm. So let's get right into it. Tell us more, uh, using the examples that you have, um, the importance between the link of sexuality and spirituality. Okay, so first I would like to uh, define spirituality. Mm. Uh, the definition that I have here is from it has been taken from taking charge of your life and well-being. So takingcharge.com. Uh, it says sexuality is a broad concept with room for many perspectives. In general, it includes a sense of connection to something bigger than us, and it is typically involved a search for meaning in life. As such, it is a universal human experience something that teaches us all so with that said i believe that we are all spirit materialized having a human experience and in this human experience we experience ourselves as we define ourselves whether we identify as male or female as we mature in this spirit material materialized body we discover ourselves as sex and sexuality. Um, and with that, I like to segue into defining what um, sexuality is. Mm. And I found this in the medical encyclopedia with Wikipedia. It says sexuality is the quality of being sexual, especially sexual orientation and behavior. The emergent sexuality of adolescents, people who are open about their sexuality. Here, you know, we are dealing with sexual orientation, behavior, and development through adolescence to adulthood, open about our sexuality. The operative word is open. Uh, so to some of these two definitions, I would say we are connected to something bigger than us. And within us, we are open about our or orientation and behaviors in our space, our place, and the world around us. However, in a world full of oppression, uh, that can cause mental health issues. Uh, most of us, whether we believe we are spiritual or don't truly understand our orientation, uh, are not open to know how to be our authentic selves due to such behaviors that stems from like PTSD or post-traumatic slave syndrome. Therefore, you know, to, to me, spirituality and sexuality are the same and are necessary to be understood 
in that context because once you know thyself, you will grow thyself into a spiritual being operating on a higher frequency of openness, open to explore the world through your natural sexual orientation and behaving accordingly. Mm. I love what you're saying. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So you just already talked about, um, um, you already defined uh, spirituality and sexuality, and you also talked about the importance of exploring this link. Yeah, so more important is like, okay, so it's important to explore this link because my field of working and helping people, uh, minority, especially African Americans, I kind of understand uh, with the help of Dr. DeGruy's lectures I've attended and her book I've read called Post Traumatic Slave Syndrome, uh, is the African, the, it's called, sorry, The American Leg Legacy of, I'm sorry, it's called Post Traumatic Slave Syndrome, America's Legacy of Enduring Injury and Healing. So it explains how African-American people still endure injury from transgenerational curses. And these curses that show up are proof that a healing is necessary. But first, an understanding of what transgenerational curses look like must be understood. So people who seek my help are amazed when they begin to connect the dots and see what I call old slave narratives uh, that governs their life, you know, still are played out in their family dynamics. So a light bulb come on, um, you know, as they understand. Mm. So we'll talk more about this after the break. Post-traumatic slave syndrome. Radio, IOM FM. Do you want to be a better communicator? Do you want to better connect with the important people in your life? Do you want to enrich your relationships? If so, join me, Matthew Cooper, on the Positive Control System Show every Wednesday evening at 11 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time on OM Times Radio. I'll meet you there. Hello, I'm Miriam Knight of New Consciousness Review, inviting you to my new show where I interview the rising stars of the Conscious Awakening. We'll explore the many faces of consciousness and action and intriguing perspectives on life, the universe, and everything in between. Join us each Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern on the Rising Stars Show. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of OM Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of OM Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. What if business could be fun? What if business is the adventure of living? What are you choosing? Where do you do business that makes it easier, more fun, or more joyful for you? We'd love to see where you do business. Connect with us on Instagram at Joy of Business or Twitter at Joy of Business and share your pictures with hashtags Business Done Where and Joy of Business. Let's change the world with business. The future of Internet radio is here. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Welcome back to Eros Evolution, where sexuality and spirituality meets. Today I have with me Felicia Hunt. Uh, she has an MA and she's currently a marriage and family therapist in turn. She operates in Paul, Paul Myrna, California. <laughs> and just before the break, we were talking a little bit. We began to talk about uh, post-traumatic slave syndrome and how... Uh, there needs to be healing around that injury. So, Felicia, can you tell us more about this? Yes, as I was saying um, in Dr. DeGruy's book, 
um, post-traumatic slave syndrome, America's legacy of enduring injury and healing, um, Dr. DeGroote illustrates in her book, and she talks about how what I call old slave narrative shows up. And, um, and I will begin to connect all of this with spirituality and sexuality, but I wanted to set up a foundation here. Mm -hmm. So she illustrates in the book and she talks about how her son was being confrontated by another young man because her son just looked at him. And this boy wanted to beat him up within an inch of his life because of a look. And then she uses another example about two women, both um, at an academic function for their children. One is a black woman, one is a white woman, and and the black and the white woman have a conversation. And the black woman talks to the white woman and and congratulates her son. But when the white woman talks to the black woman uh, and compliment her son. And this is where I talk about understanding what transgenerational curses look like. Uh, as the white woman went on and praised her son and gave, you know, good accolades and everything about her son, the black woman said, well, he's just a handful. He's a mess or he gets on my nerves, something to that effect. And uh, those things play out in not only African-American lives, but this this type of unconscious uh Oppression just plays out and, and, and is normalized. And what is going on here is that when back in slavery time, when this type of behavior was used, it was a subtle coping mechanism for survival because if the slave master would have heard the conversation of the child being bride or was very equipped to do whatever the performance was, you know, the master might get an idea to separate the family. So in using this kind of coping mechanism, these transgenerational curses still show up today, but has lost the meaning of why they still exist today. So to put it in context, you can probably imagine, well, how would these children, you know, grow up like the like the boy who wants to beat somebody up because of a look and overhearing your parents talk about you in such a way that is not positive at all that how could you continue to grow in a space and place and really know who you are and actually exist and really connect to a higher to a higher realm and understand how you are sexually orientated and be free and not allow others to speak for you or think for you or define uh, who you are. So some of these things happen and play out and that's the work that I do to help parents become better parents through my effective parenting class, effective black parenting class, and it's also cultural. I deal with other cultures as well. And uh, to begin to get rid of some of these things that shows up in our lives that still have us in a place that we don't need to be anymore. That's fantastic what you're doing. Thank you. So I'm curious, you, you mentioned uh, besides the African-American community, you also work with other cultures? Yes, yes. I have uh, worked with Latina and Latino uh, population. I also work with some Asian population as well. Mm -hmm. And um, my experience is that, you know, as we talk about spirituality and sexuality, uh, no matter, like I work with sexual assault survivors, and no matter what the cause, you know, to, that affected the person, I always get at who the person really is. And we explore together before the trauma, who were you? Before the trauma, let's look at 
who you were and how you felt you actually exist in this world. Mm -hmm. And then we can look at the trauma and, and deal with the trauma in a way that is freeing, that they can now use some mindfulness exercises, some coping mechanism, so that they can begin the journey of healing. Mm. Fantastic. <laughs> yes. Do so. you do you feel that um, um, you know this is one I guess school of thought of this uh, old slave narratives? Do you mm. feel that perhaps? Uh, uh, over the different generations, it's less of a whole and more of like a cultural thing of uh, hum humility, you know, perceived humility. Like, oh yeah, my son's he's he's very naughty. I think that's a very Asian thing as well. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, that's what I'm saying is that yeah, we can say those things and mm. uh, in our family and in 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 different cultures. But what I'm talking about here is that when it doesn't allow you to really move in a space of knowing who you are and how you are seen or how you perceive yourself in the world, when you are not conscious of your own oppressions and it affects you in a way in your everyday life that you live under this, under this lens that you are not free to be the person you were created to be, mm. you know. So using that example, say, yeah. for instance, you know, when rearing children, uh, sometimes we can crush a, a, a child's soul with that harsh punishment. There are other effective ways in parenting a child than you know, yelling and screaming and, you know, or even whipping, you know, there are more effective ways. And that's what I teach, a more effective ways of getting the results that we want with our children so that they can be free and really understand how to communicate in the world, how to speak for themselves, how to navigate systems and get around and move in the world. So understanding that is the ultimate goal. Mm, yeah. I I really like what you're doing. This is such important word, work. <laughs> uh, we, you know, there's this saying, like we are the product of our parents and our parents are the product of their parents. So dealing with that uh, helps to really wipe out a whole generation of all these things that really doesn't serve us anymore and stops us from being fully who we are meant to be. So I like how you are doing uh, parenting workshops and working with parents. Yes. yes. So important. It's very important. It's, you know, in, in, individually, um, communally. I mean, it just it's just a place where I really. I really like doing this work because I know that once a person truly understands the implications of what has been handed down generations and generations, it, it can be freeing, you know, to understand, oh, I had this behavior because of this, and now I can look, move forward and, and define myself and say, Okay, I know why. It's a, it's the same, it's a phrase that, that is called Sankofa. And it's a bird where you, where it lays its egg on its back. And so it looks back every now and again to check on its egg. And the saying is for Sankofa is that you look back to know where you came from so that you'll know where you're going, right? And so that's the whole thing of Sankofa. You know, in my practice, I help people to go back, go mm -hmm. back and see. And, you know, the trauma sometimes is too difficult, you know, to remember. But we take it step by step. And, and as we uncover 
what's going on, now we can know where, how we are to move forward, you know. And so you have to be able to look at your life from a historical perspective, uh, from a generational perspective, and put all these things together so that it will make sense to you why you have the behaviors that are showing up in your life today. And when you see that, you can begin to make freer choices and decisions about your life, how you're going to move forward. And so that's the exciting work is when people can connect the dots and begin to move forward in a way that is freeing to them, that makes them feel like they are connected to a higher being, that they can identify themselves as they are oriented, you know, throughout this life. And I think that's, that's, that's the point of the work that I do. I like the way you're describing it. It gives me a whole different appreciation of how therapists work and how deep they can bring their clients into this. Uh, it's, it's, it's almost like it's a very dark uh, place that they have to venture into and they really need to have a lot of compassion and gentleness and hand-holding to be able to look back. Yes, yes. I mean... When I was in uh, my academic career, I was taught that, you know, just being yourself is a way of being the best therapist that you can be. And so we were also taught that, you know, we had to know our own self because there's a thing in therapy that's, that happens, and that is... Um, the countertransference. Mm. Okay. So let's pause for a break and we can talk more about countertransference after after this. Yeah. The best of holistic, spiritual and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Radio Namaste leads you down the yellow brick road into portals of consciousness with the blue-collar goddess as your host. Interviews with humans who could be famous or just popular, and answers to everything are on the agenda. Tune into Om Times Radio and drop in on Thursdays at 3 Eastern. It's a different brand of enlightenment. Hi, my name is Monica, and I'm the host of Co-Creating Now. Give yourself an opportunity to connect with your all-knowing higher self, and manifest joy, love, and peace together every Tuesday, 11 a.m. Eastern. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. OM Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single OM Times endeavor. Host your show with OM Times Radio Network. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Welcome back to Eros Evolution, where sexuality and spirituality meet. You are listening to Eros Evolution on the Om Times Radio Network. And you can share this show with your friends right now by sending them the link omtimes.com forward slash mobile. This allows uh, you, your friends and yourself to be able to listen to the show without needing to download any app. This is actually the use of some advanced technology that we have on this platform and it's really convenient. So I believe your friends uh, would really appreciate uh, you sharing with them the link. So 
Uh, moving on, uh, I would like listeners to know that this is the month of May, and May is Masturbation Month in the U.S. And every year in May, uh, Arrows Coaching in Singapore has a little campaign around masturbation. And so you can subscribe to my Masturbation Month uh, free email list by going to arrowscoaching.com uh, forward slash subscription dash options and you'll be able to subscribe to all my different campaigns that are related to sexuality uh, including not just masturbation month but also uh, eco sex fabulous love and i also have a mother's day and father's day campaign that you may want to subscribe to where i interview my friends talking about their relationships uh, with their parents where I started this because I feel that it is important for us to work on healing our uh, parent-child wound. So having said that, let's come back to the show. And just before the break, Felicia was talking about counter-transference. And I think it's important to know what it is because uh, when you go seek out a therapist or when you work with people as somebody who is perhaps a different kind of helping professional, it's important to know um, what this really means. So, Felicia, welcome back. Yes, thank you. So, tell us a little bit about counter-transference. Yeah, so with counter-transference, the client can come in and it can be something you said or how you look or whatever, and whatever issue that they're going through, they could project it onto you. Mm. And as I was talking about knowing thyself as a clinician, the transference part is that if we don't understand who we are and what our triggers are as clinicians, then we can transfer our unresolved issues or things that we still have conflict with onto our clients. And then with that kind of interference, the joining never happens. So in regards to knowing thyself, to grow ourselves and becoming to understand ourselves as sexual and spiritual beings, even in a space and place that we create for our clients, we have to know that for ourselves so that we could be effective in the treatment that we use, you know, working with our clients. So, um, so whatever the issue is, and you can recognize that maybe I'm being a trigger to my client, you can begin to explore uh, what that is and then help the client understand that they are in the present mm -hmm. you know that you are not that person or whatever it is that you're triggering them with and then that allows you as a professional a, clini a clinician to not get tied up in that and take it personal you have to know where the fine line is you know and we have to know that if any person show up, whether they may trigger us to feel like, you know, well, maybe this they don't want to do the work or whatever it is that we may feel as clinicians, the mere fact that the person is there is saying that they want our help. Mm -hmm. So we really have to look deep within ourselves to know who we are as spiritual beings. And, and, and sexual beings and being whole and being okay with who we are to be able to help somebody else. Yeah, <sighs> I definitely agree with that. We are all on a journey and just because we are clinicians doesn't mean that we know everything and it's very important that we also continue to work on ourselves. Yes, I agree. Mm. So for the listeners out there, how do you uh, feel uh, they can uh, begin to explore the link between sexuality and spirituality for themselves because they they don't have any training and they don't have any coaching that we we receive ourselves as uh, uh, people who are clinicians. So what would you suggest to listeners? Uh, I would suggest, you know, you know reading is good. Um, there are some good books out there. Um, Let's see here. I was thinking about, uh, like for women, they can read uh, Sacred Women, A Guide to Healing the Feminine Body by Afua, Queen Afua. Um, there also is another book 
that is escaping my mind here. Um, oh, well, besides reading books, they can also um, just get in touch with uh, their local uh, clinician or someone that's in the profession or sex coach like myself, if they want to speak with me, I am offering um, a 15-minute free telemedicine uh, uh, communication uh, session. Great. You know? So at my, they can connect with me through my email, which we gave, which is fehunt1 at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. And we'll be glad to provide more information and more resources at that time. Uh, when they contact me. Mm. Great. Do you have any uh, specific resources for people who are African Americans? Uh, specific resources? Yes. Um, they there are there are um, some other um, professionals who are working in the field. I would just say that wherever they are in their community to just resource someone who specialized in Africana studies or Africana family services if they really want to know more about their heritage and their cultures and what transgenerational curses are. Um, Those people who are experienced and have the background and degrees can really help them unpack that information. Is there a place besides uh, ASAC that people could go and look up a list of all the practitioners in their area? Do you know of any? I'm just curious. Uh, besides, as far as uh, sex therapists? Mm, yeah. You know, I don't know if there is a directory for, um, you know, I know they could go to like CAMP or AMP. You know, they always have on their website, which is the camp is the California, um, um, the California Association for Marriage and Family Therapists. And on their website, they do have lists of different um, therapists Mm. and specializations. Mm. Um, So organizations like that, people can get information from. Mm. Great. Also, the ABCI, which is ABCI.com, which is A, B, and S, and it's P-S-I, not P-S-Y, but P-S-I.com. They can also get other resources if people are um, looking for African-American professionals. That is a resource as well to connect mm-hmm. the African-American community. Mm-hmm. Great. So listeners should uh, begin reading to be more aware of the link between sex and spirituality and also, uh, you know, begin working on themselves and then they can seek out uh, practitioners. And you've just offered to listeners a free 15-minute consult and they can uh, redeem this by emailing you at fehunt1 at gmail.com. Do you have any uh, practical tip or tool that uh, you could share with listeners that they can start using immediately? Yes, I love um, mindfulness exercises and meditation. Mm. Um, You know, as you wake in the morning, to be aware of your presence and your breath, to inhale and take deep breaths and listen to your breath, and... Uh, set your intentions for your day of what you want to accomplish and what you want to achieve for the day and always live in in life and love and happiness and um, you know as you are you know that is what you will get back mm. beautiful mm. Is this something that you do for yourself as well every day? Oh, most definitely I do. I take time out 
you know, if it's not every day, I do somewhere within the day, I have to give time for myself to do the self-care. And especially as a clinician, that is stress that we should do self-care. And that is part of my self-care to uh, meditate, to, you know, give myself time to take care of myself so that I can take care of others. Mm. So on average, uh, you know, you take the time out to do it. How long would you say would be an effective time to, uh, you know, duration to do the meditation for? Yes, for beginners, you know, because it's, it's hard quieting yourself and centering yourself and getting in touch with your core because of a lot of noise that I call it is noise within our own hearts and minds that we have we have to quiet down. So it might take anywhere from a good 45 minutes to an hour, you know, you know, sometimes people wake up an extra hour early just to do their meditation before they start their day because you know, there are steps, you know, you want to make sure you are fully engaging in releasing all the negative and dark energy and, and filling your body with light and love and so that you can go out being intentional for your day. But as you become comfortable with meditation and mindful exercises, it shouldn't take anywhere between, you know, 15, 20 minutes to do you know, once you know your body and what it is that you need to do to get rid of some of the negative energy. Because negative energy is is dumb and it just hang on to anything. And so um, as you release it um, and filling yourself with life and love, you know, you will begin to connect with the universe around you and begin to attract the things that you want in your life. Great. Thank you so much for sharing this. We have a break and we'll be back. Radio, IOM FM. Dr. Kevin here, and I want to invite you every Thursday, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, to join me on the Dr. Kevin Show, where we have a diversity of guests who help you step outside the box, behind the curtain, and see what a load of crap is going on in the world today, so you have more information with which to make better decisions. We'll see you there. Namaste. The truth is, you can't change the world if you're broke. I know. I tried. Isn't it time you turned your life's calling into a profitable, freedom-based business? I'm Michelle Barr. Join me every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern for Sacred Success. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.ohmtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Ohm Times. Welcome back to Eros Evolution, where sexuality and spirituality meets. I'd like to do a little shout out for myself. I am in the midst of a doing crowdfunding for my second book and if you are curious about finding out more about my book on orgasmic yoga you can check out this link it's a publicizer that's p-u-b-l-i-s-h-i-z-e-r.com 
forward slash underscore orgasmic dash yoga. <laughs> so check out this link because I'm doing crowdfunding for this book and I need to raise money so that uh, I have enough orders to then be able to publish it. Uh, just before the break, we were talking with Felicia about what uh, all of us can do in order to begin exploring the link of our sexuality and spirituality, them being uh, the same, being helping us to be more of who we are meant to be. She talked a lot about, uh, she talked a little bit about mindfulness and how all of us can just come into being awareness of our presence, our breath, and we can use this time to set intention for the day. And so I like to ask uh, Felicia, uh, you know, we lots of people understand the benefits of mindfulness and meditation. And you also mentioned that you do it for yourself. Um, how exactly do people uh, start meditating? Do well, you, you know, we are, we are in the age of technology. And... Um, for those who don't know, you can go to uh, YouTube. They have a lot of uh, great meditations on YouTube that you can look up. Um, various people demonstrating how to do mindful exercises. Uh, also, you know, just be aware of what's happening in your community. If you want to get out into the community, you know, find some resource, some place that teaches yoga, um, they will find that there, that that's what they focus on, um, is mindful exercises and breath through yoga. So yeah, those would be the few things that I would suggest. Mm. Yeah, great. This, uh, this would be the same things that I would probably suggest to my clients as well. Uh, there's so many fantastic videos on YouTube and it's all free and we can easily look them up by seeing which are the more popular ones and they're probably popular because they are good so that is a good way to begin uh, seeing what kinds of uh, meditation they are drawn to there are so many ways to meditate actually and Everybody has a different style, and so it's, it's, it's a good place to go and start figuring out what they like. Right. So is there anything else that I should um, um, be asking you? Anything else that you would like to share with listeners out there? Well, yeah, there were, there were one, one thing that I wanted to address about uh, spirituality and sexuality. Um, you know, I think that with um, any current situation that may be, you know, very hard pressed on anybody, there's this uh, book called um, "It's a Transactional Analysis" by Eric Byrne. He's a uh, doctor MD, and uh, he talks about how. We, as infants, you know, we look outside ourselves to get what we need, which is a stimulus hunger, he calls it. And then as we move through the development of stages, we go through this thing called recognition hunger. And that is as we individualize, uh, we are on this self-quest for recognition. And then as we go on further, then we try to structure ourselves, you know, have some structure in life. And he calls that structure, structure hunger and um, how one structure one's life. And so with that, he emphasized that we play these, we play these games all for attention. And, you know, they say negative attention is better than no attention at all. But what he really gets at that gets me about his book is that he talks about what we all need. And he has this word, it's called loving impregnation. Mm -hmm. And what impregnation means 
It, it means to cause to um, to be filled, to be imbued, to permeate, to be saturated thoroughly. So he's saying that we need love at this deep level, that we need to be imbued, we need to be saturated thoroughly, you know, for us to operate in our authentic selves. And I think that's what sexuality and spirituality brings. When you understand that and are fully conscious of where you are with yourself and in your life, you can begin to not only love yourself, but love others. So what, So I, I try to understand what you're saying is we need love in order to be able to heal ourselves? Oh, most definitely. Mm -hmm. I mean, because we are our worst critics. You know, we are so hard on ourselves with any day-to-day -day activity or experience, right? And so if we could begin to love ourselves and forgive ourselves about whatever the situation is and truly understand the context of which things happen, you know, for example, like I said, I work with sexual assault, you know, I try to get the person, because when you're going through that kind of trauma, you know, the survivor at one point feels that it was their fault, could feel that it was their fault, mm -hmm. but by no means should anybody be sexually assaulted. And how do you get one to understand that they are worthy to be loved after a sexual assault, right? Mm -hmm. So the work then has to take place with defining who you are. And in defining who you are and really beginning to look at it and look at yourself, you begin to, the person who was sexually assaulted can begin to love themselves. And with that, that person can go through life operating in the capacity to love others. And to me, that's healing. Mm -hmm. So to, to heal, um, they need an infusion of love. So where, where can they get that or how can they get that? Well, that's the work. See, that's the work that each of us have to do. That's mm -hmm. the work that in your individual counseling session, when you seek your therapy, when somebody should want to seek therapy, that is the work that has to unfold. Um, I think that's the bottom line that we have to get to. So one of one of the uh, things you that comes to mind that you already mentioned is actually uh, meditation. Oh yeah, I mean hmm. yeah, that in that arena too. Yeah. I mean, of it works together and you see how they all everything physical that we need you know we as human beings need different they could become uh, ritualistic activities to help us stay on our journey to being our authentic self you know and that is my whole premise I think is freeing you know, no matter what is going on around us, or just taking myself as an example, no matter what turmoils or trials and tribulations that could be going on in my life, you know, with understanding who I am and loving myself, I could survive a situation. Yeah. And, that work, and that's the work that I try to transfer on to others, you know, just to give an example, the part about me working with differently disabled, you know, that's close to my heart because I was born with sickle cell disease and that is a blood disease. And uh, so I know 
about pain. I know about being in the hospital. I know about not being able to do certain things that is called quote unquote normal to others, you know. And if I did not know who I was or was grounded in my spirituality, um, I could not be here today or I would not be here today. So mm -hmm. it's very important. I live it. I, I'm a person who lives what I preach, you know, so I know firsthand about the work that needs to take place for healing to come. Mm -hmm. Because it's in our minds that, you know, that that become made manifest. Whatever it is you have on your mind, you will speak it and you will manifest it. So if you want something different, you have to look within, or like Michael Jackson says in his song, you know, mm -hmm. I'm looking at the man in the mirror, you know? Mm -hmm. You have to do that. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Felicia, for joining us today. And for listeners out there, you probably get the same sense as I do that she is classy and she has a certain poise about her. And you can definitely benefit a lot from seeking out her services at fehunt1 at gmail.com. Next week, I'll be having with me Lindsay uh, Hen. Hen Hagerman, and she is the co-editor of a new book coming out called Ecosexuality. So tune in to Arrow's Evolution next week. <laughs>